What's up friends? Today I'm going to show you how to add an overlay to our images in list sections. Uh, we'll also add some fun effects like a gradient effect and some hover effects, stuff like that. Let's take a look at what we'll be building. All right, so here's what we're going to be building. Just these overlays on top of our image. This is a list section right here. We'll do it for a simple list right here. We'll do it for our banner slideshow, which is great because it really makes the text pop if you do this darker background, uh, darker overlay. Uh, we'll do it for a carousel. Uh, the coloring and the image choices I've gone with here. Not really sure why I did that, but you get the idea. You can do it for any three of our list section types. Um, and then we'll look at doing a gradient. So this little gradient is kind of cool. We got this orange-ish up here, and then it fades to transparent in the middle over the face. And then we have this purplish gradient down here. So it's kind of a nice little effect. Um, then we can do the using nth of type. We can target and change the color of each individual item in a repeating fashion. So the first, fourth, seventh, each one of those will be orange and then purple and then red and then it'll repeat. Kind of neat. And then lastly, we can do this fun effect where the gradient, whatever overlay you've added, it'll go away and the image will zoom in. All right, so you can get all of these right now over on my website. Uh, I'll add a link down below. And if you want even more customizations for your Squarespace website, check out the code catalog, which is part of my Code Curious membership over on my website. Uh, it's got a bunch of code snippets that you can use for your Squarespace website or a client's website. Um, but enough of that, let's jump into this. So the first thing I want to show you how to do is how do we even add one of these overlays? And once we have an understanding of that, we'll apply it to the three different list section types and then play around with some of our fun effects. All right. The general CSS pattern to add an overlay on top of an image is we want to target the parent element of whatever image, the image element we're going with. We want to target its parent and then add a pseudo after element to it, which kind of places another element right here that we can position on top of our image. So to target that, I'm just going to grab the the image class right there, image right there, and then we're going to give this after pseudo element. Now these pseudo elements need a content property. So I could say content, you know, whatever you want in between the single stuff, you'll see it pop up down there, but we obviously don't want any text. We just need the content property for anything to pop up. So we're just going to make that empty for right now. And then I'm going to say we want it to be as wide as the parent container and as tall as the parent container. Now let's give it a background, let's spell that right, of red. And we should see something coming up, but we're not. And that's probably because it's not positioned. Absolute. Absolute. And now here it is right there. And now because we're positioned absolutely, we can use the left and right properties to position it within the parent container. And so typically you want to say left, left zero, top zero, and that'll position it to the top left of the element, of its parent element. So it's 100% wide, 100% tall, great. And then the last thing we want to adjust is obviously the opacity. And we'll make that maybe 0.4. And now we have this nice little overlay. So this is all we need to do to create an overlay. We need to make sure we're targeting the parent element of our image, and then we can just adjust the background of that ele of the uh, pseudo element that we've created and adjust the opacity depending on what we want to go with. Cool, okay, so that's how this works. Now let's learn to apply this to a list section. So to do that, we just need to target the image on a list section. So first I need to go to my custom CSS area. Uh, right now that's in website all the way at the bottom, website tools, and then custom CSS. Now I'm just gonna paste in the CSS. So this is the target, right? So this is what we were targeting, the image on our simple list section, and then adding this pseudo element after it. And then of course, all of the, the properties and values that I just discussed. So feel free to adjust our background color to be whatever you want. Uh, you can adjust the opacity to be darker. It goes between zero and one or lighter, whatever it is. Let's just go back to what we had though, because I like that color for this. Good enough. Now let's do this for our slideshow, our list section slideshow and our, uh, our carousel, list section carousel. I'm just gonna grab these from my website over here. Here is uh, my tutorial slideshow list sections. I'm just gonna copy this code 
and paste it in right here. And notice really the only thing that's different between these two is what we're targeting. And we have the user item list banner slideshow just to sort of give you an idea. But this is also why we wanna leave comments so we can know in a little bit more clear language exactly what we're changing. And I've just changed the color here to black. So that is great. So now we can make this text a lot more visible. The contrast between the image and the text a lot better. And then of course, if we wanted to do this for our carousel list section, well, let's just grab that carousel list section code. Same thing, the only thing that has been changed is our target. And then of course, I've changed the color just to show you that it's a bit different. All right, so that's the targeting stuff. Now let's do some of the fun things. How do we add a gradient? Let's add a gradient to our list section. So I'm gonna do these examples, these next examples, just with our simple list section because it's easiest, but feel free to replace the target with uh, the carousel target or the slideshow target that we just did. So back up here with our simple list, instead of just doing a single a static color, what I'm going to use is a linear gradient CSS function. And this function takes two parameters right here, right out the gate. The first is the direction of our gradient. So I want my uh, gradient to go from the top left to the bottom right. So I'm just going to say to bottom right. There we go. So you can add a degrees like like 45 degree right there that that works just as well but i feel like two bottom right is a little bit more clear and then the other parameter is just a list of the colors that we want the gradient to move through so i'm just going to say let's just for simplicity's sake let's say red and blue right and now it's starting from red transitioning to blue at the bottom right now another thing i like to do especially with these gradients is just to do line breaks between each one of these values. It's just a lot easier for me to see what is happening. And it doesn't do anything, it doesn't slow your website down if you have extra lines. It's just easier for you to read. So, but we don't wanna go red to blue, right? Let's give uh, red and then maybe transparent and then blue. And now we have this color up here, transparent in the middle, sort of to give the focus on the face right here, and then blue down here. All right, so another fun thing we can do is use the nth of type pseudo selector to target specific items within our list sections. So the nth of type only works on sibling elements. And if we look at the HTML over here, the sibling elements that we want to loop through on our nth of type is these this list item uh, element, this list item tag name, and maybe we can target the list item class just to be a little bit more specific. So this is what we want to use our nth of type to loop through here. So let's go back to our HTML before our list item media enter because that is within it, but after our user items list simple because our user items list simple, it contains our entire collection here. I'm gonna say li.list item. So we're targeting the list item within it. And now I'm gonna say nth of type one. And now this is only going to apply to our first one. Well, what about our second one? We can do second, third. There we go. So this is how we can loop through our items within a list section. So now let's abstract this one level further. So I'm gonna target our user list item simple, right? And then our list item right there, our nth of type three, how about that? And I'm gonna give this a custom property. Uh, let's say background color, of red, just of red. We need to keep the same property value syntax with our colon there. And now I'm gonna target, I'm gonna use this, this custom property here instead of our gradient. So I'm gonna say var, pull in our custom property, and there we go. So now we can get rid of this, right? And now this is only going to pull in, it is adding the background color to each one of these, but only our third item has this property defined, this custom property defined. And so now I could jump back in. We can say our first maybe should be uh, blue and our second should be yellow. And this is how we do different ones. So this is our first, second, and third. However, we're gonna run into a problem when we add our fourth because we don't wanna jump back into our code and add the fourth. We really wanna loop through one, two, three and loop through those. So instead of doing one, two, three, I'm gonna say every third on the first item of the third and then every third the second item and then every third the third item. And now we're looping through every third item giving each a different color, super cool. 
Now, no tutorial would be complete without a fun hover effect. So to do that, let's go back to our linear gradient here and let's get rid of these, the nth of type items there. So the way we want to do that, we need to abstract this and sort of deconstruct this a little bit more um, because when I hover over a list item, so the list item hover, I want the image to scale up and what we've targeted here, our, our uh, overlay to go away. So first I'm gonna do this, our user item list simple and I'm gonna target our list item within it. And now, sort of put our, our this is our overlay, so let's add a comment, this is our overlay, right? And now let's say uh, we want to give our image, as, we, as the image is going to have a transform property of a scale of just one. So no, no transforming of our image. If we said uh, 1.1, notice the images zoom in. So this is what we're gonna adjust as we hover over our list item. So let's go back to one uh, and also give this a transition. We want to transition our transform property over half a second maybe and give it an ease. Okay, so here we go. You saw it ease back out there. That was quite nice. Okay, so this is our overlay. This is just our normal, uh, normal image. And now I'm gonna say and in uh, less, in our CSS less, this ampersand just corresponds to whatever we have in the parent selector up there. And so as we're hovering over our list item right here, we want to change these two right here. So I'm just gonna put our image right there. Whoop. I wanna put our image, copy that, put it right there. I wanna adjust my image value. I wanna adjust the transform on that. And I wanna remove my overlay. So I'm gonna put these two targets in here as we hover over. So our image overlay, I'm gonna say transform. We want this to go to, we wanna scale up to maybe 1.1, right? And then our image overlay, let's just say background transparent. And now, there we go. And we have a little bit, you see the, the image zooms in, that's nice, but but the, the, the overlay just kind of evaporates immediately. I don't really like that. So what I'm actually gonna do is change this to opacity zero. Uh, and then give this a transition of the opacity property. I'm going to use the same, these same values right there. Oop. And now we get this nice subtle effect. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Like I said, the link down below for all the code snippets that I use in this tutorial. And if you want even more code snippets, check out my website. I got a bunch of free tutorials. I got some plugins that you can use on your website and also the Code Curious membership that gets you access to a bunch of premium code snippets and premium tutorials. All right, that's it. I'll see you next time.